All right, so today we're doing monocular and binocular cues. The first one is monocular. Now, monocular are cues for one eye, which means if you cover one eye with an eye patch or with your hand, you can still decipher depth. Does that make sense? This is all dealing with depth perception. So your first one is linear perspective. Now, linear perspective and you do need to know these for your test. Linear perspective is the tendency for parallel lines to converge on one another. I drew it for you. You like that talent? You're not even looking, Quentin. It's right over there. It's really good. Okay? In uh, art class, didn't you have to do uh, depth? Uh, didn't you have to draw like the cityscape and all that stuff? Okay? I would draw an example of it because you're going to have to identify it in a picture on your test. Uh, relative size is when you have something that is further away. When something is small, we assume it's further away. So over here in my awesome drawing, I have a big person and I have a little person. Because the big one, I assume it's closer than my little person, which I assume is further away, just depending on the height. Like for instance, have you ever seen a little person from far away? Have you ever seen like a little person? Okay? When they're far away, you can't really tell if they're a little person if they're not standing next to someone else. Have you noticed that? It's only when they start getting closer or you have something to compare it to that you're like, oh, wow, that's a little person. Okay? That is relative size. So when they're further away, everyone's small, but in the same proportions as you get closer. So right now, I'm far away from Julian. <coughs> now I'm close to Julian. Now I'm further away. When I get real up and close to this business, he knows I'm close. Thank you. Interposition is the assumption that layering, um, that if something can be completely seen, it has to be in front. A perfect example of this what's in front? Why? <laughs> What's in front? It's we, people. It's we. <laughs> okay? We. This is my fall festive, okay? I always have seasonal festive stuff. This is my fall festive. Okay? Is it real? Yeah, it is. You could sit there and chew on it if you want. No, you're not chewing on it. I've had this wheat for years, and it will stay here. Don't judge. It's dried wheat. All right. So, interposition. Because the jar is in front of the pumpkin, you know that... The wheat is in front of the pumpkin. That's interposition. It's the layering effect. When you can see the completeness of one object and you can see an incomplete one, you assume that the incomplete one is behind. Okay? Your next one. Oh, by the way, my picture is um, a coffee cup in front of a globe. I don't know why I felt like getting creative yesterday. I, I am sorry. Hence why I went straight to the pumpkin. Okay? Your next one is aerial perspective. Okay, aerial perspective is the haziness that follows. Have you ever seen like a mountain from far away? Does it look nice and crisp and clear or does it look like it's in fog? Oh. Fog, that's aerial perspective. So the closer you are to something, the more detailed, the further you are, the more hazy it is. Okay, even if there's no fog on the mountain, it looks like there's fog around the mountain. Okay. Uh, texture gradient is like a Monet. Okay? The closer you are to a Monet, the uglier the painting is. Because it's all splotches. Okay? All the different color splotches are next to each other. If you look at a Monet really, really close, it's just a bunch of splotches. The further back you get from the Monet, all of a sudden you see the beautiful picture. Yes? Hello? That is texture gradient. The closer, the more detail, the further away. It's just like when you look at those mirrors, those little tiny, like super micro, uh, super like. Magnified, that was the word I was going for. And you like look at your skin and you're like, oh my god, how do people look at me in the face? Like, this is awful. Oh, is that, am I the only person who feels that way? Okay, texture gradient is closer, further away, it's a bigger image. Motion parallax, this gets me um, motion sick all the time. When you're driving down the road, and you're not driving, you're in the passenger seat. When you're in the passenger seat and you're looking ahead, you can see the trees coming, correct? And they're like going at what seems like a reasonable speed for whatever speed you're going, for safe speed. So as the trees are coming, they're like, oh no, trees are coming. And then you look to the side, and they're like, shh, 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 shh. 
No? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't it make you nauseous? No. Oh. It makes me nauseous. That's how I feel. Motion parallax. Okay. So when you look at something in a short verse, it goes super, super fast. But when you look at it for a long time, you can see it coming. Motion parallax. And then finally, you have accommodation. It's squinting to see more clearly. It's a shifting. When you transition from one thing to the next, and it takes a second for it to clarify, that's accommodation. Okay? What? So why do you squint? So you can see better. I know. Like, what is it to you? Um, it tightens up your muscles that hold your lens, and it also blocks out more light. So you can really, like, hunker in there and try to figure it out. All right, we good? Okay. All right, so here is motion parallax, okay? If you were driving, okay, um, these trees would come by slowly, and if you're looking out the side window, they go really fast. This is also uh, linear. Uh, perspective, it looks like the it's going to converge, you're going to fall off. Did your pet, my dad lied to me when I was a little kid. We would drive down like a really straight highway. He's like, oh my god, at the end of this road, we're going to fall off. Look, you can see it, you can see it. No? Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, aerial gradient, okay, this is, you can see these rocks really large. No, this isn't. This is relative size. Just kidding. Uh, relative size, you can see the huge rocks. Over here, they look really tiny. Relative size. Um, over here, this is your aerial perspective. That The mountains look like they're in a haze. They're really not. It's a nice sunny day. Further away, so it looks like in a haze. Mono. Why not? Everyone good? You'll have to identify these on your test on Thursday, by the way. Binocular means it requires two eyes. How exciting. All right. So we're going to get intimate here in a second. All right, so binocular means two eyes are necessary. So if you lost one of your eyes and a tragic forking, got stabbed in a fork in the eye, you cannot, I don't know, I don't know. That's not what that's a fork. Yeah, why not? Okay, um, you cannot do, you cannot see this type of depth perception. So, if you lost your eye in a tragic horseshoe toss, you can't do it. Actually, yes. Actually, I've done the many. Oh! All right, so the first one is convergence. When the eyes tilt in, to see things closely. Okay, you're gonna do convergence right now with a buddy. So, what you're going to do is one of you, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. One of you is going to bring your finger as far as you can, and then bring it in and stare at it as long as you possibly can, and the other person's gonna watch your eyes turn in. Go, and then switch. Find a buddy. It's really not that great. <laughs> Bring it closer to you. Yes, yeah, your own face. Own face, you weirdos. Your own face. Anna, show Marie. No, so she can see your eyes doing it. You're doing it so that you can see their eyes doing it, and so you can see they can see your eyes. You weirdos. Yeah, you can. But like now you can kind of see. All right, here we go. Binocular disparity. Binocular disparity is your next one. Binocular disparity is the difference in what each eye sees. Okay? Closer. <laughs> yes, except it's two. Okay. 
please keep in mind that in your field of vision, I would draw this, by the way. It's pretty good. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it right now. That's pretty good. I'll give him some awesome eyebrows. Okay. Maybe not so good anymore. <laughs> it really went downhill. It really went downhill. Okay, so binocular disparity is this. Okay? So this is your left. Okay? So, this is your left eye. This is your right, okay? So in your field of vision, okay? So a normal person with a field of vision is essentially, if you stick your elbow out, your elbow, stick your hand all the way out. Your elbow is when your disparity essentially ends. That anything that's beyond your elbow, uh, both eyes can see, and there's no disparity. Does that make sense? Okay? Binocular disparity is anything that's only happening in this area, or in this area, okay? Binocular disparity is when things only happen in this area or in this area. It's because both eyes aren't seeing the same thing at the same time, so only one of the eye is processing the information, not both eyes. And that causes major issues. The closer it is to your face, obviously the more challenging it is, okay? If you wanted to, you could have um, someone stand behind you, and I just don't have time to do it and just kind of like put their hands right next to your eyes and like play a game if you could see it. Have them stare forward and see if they can see it and have them raise the opposite hand and it takes so long. Oh my God. It takes so long to do, like the coordination component because one eye sees it and the other one doesn't and it takes your brain a little too long to figure it out because especially if you have two eyes that um, your brain isn't compa uh, prepared to deal with it. Means your brain relies on both, which is pretty cool. All right, are we good? Does that make sense? Hello? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, thank god. That was awesome. Okay, so that's your monocular and your binocular. Monocular one, binocular two. All right, here we go on the whiteboard, super quick. <clears throat> All right, please tell me what Q is this? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say it. All right, on your whiteboard, please tell me what am I describing? When I look at Mount Fuji, I see these beautiful clouds. However, right in front of me, I see a beautiful tree line with plenty of detail. Good. No. Tell me what specifically. What is it, Quentin? There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. While I'm canoeing, oh, that's rowing. While I'm canoeing, okay, in front of me, I see beautiful open lake, and next to me I'm getting seasick because the coastline's going so fast because I'm a boss. <laughs> what is this an example of? Good. What is it, Bailey? Motion parallel. All right. If I looked at um, my diamond here, I would find out that it's super, super flawed. No, I wouldn't. I'm just kidding. He probably has some. Okay? So if I got in there with a microscope, and if it was clean, let's start there. The closer I got, I would see that it's definitely not a flawed diamond. But, girl, when I got it clean and it catches the sunlight, I'm like, eh. Except I have a ring, so I'm not a single lady. Margo. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. I'm behind my Yeti cup. <laughs> I am behind, how do I go? That's the list you need. I'm behind the Yeti cup. What is it, Anna? In a position. What? Is this mono or bi binocular? Mon monocular or binocular? So if a ladybug flew on my nose, I'm standing here going like that. Oh my god, that hurts my eyes. I think I'm getting too old to do this crap. I used to be able to do it. What is it, Chloe? Binocular. If I see that Miles is sitting in front of Bailey, is that binocular or monocular? Guys, if I can slap my face and say, oh, Miles is still in front of Bailey, I win. So it's what? 
Uh, Aaron. There you go. All right, everyone's good? Yes? I will tell you that a lot of the monocular cues are on your test on Friday. There's a bunch of them on your midterm, and you'll see a couple of them on the AP exam. I'm sorry, they're not fun, but it's life. Vote Thursday, like your test in the future. Have a great day, guys.